So this presentation is dedicated to those in the group who are doing one rice diet plate and may not be following the rice diet 100%. And next week, I'm gonna be talking about the rice diet and how to go all in 100%. And then I'm gonna be introducing a boot camp, and that'll be next week. And so, and so other than the rice diet, I wanted to introduce a few weight loss strategies that can we can try as well. And so there's eight weight loss strategies. The first five I'll just briefly mention, and then the rest of the presentation will be focused on the last three. Eliminate caloric beverages with water as a preferred beverage, though plain tea and black coffee may be allowed. Eliminate snacking between meals. Time-restricted feeding, such as 16-8 or 18-6, and most people are familiar with this. And so the first number is the amount of time that you spend fasting or not consuming any calories. And then the second number is your feeding window. Two meals a day. This works for me on most days. And then physical exercise. And so one of those five, um, we can try one or we can try all um, different things that we can do to help with weight loss. The principles of calorie density. So this is the focus of today's presentation, crowding out, uh, preloading, or filling up first. Um, these are three different things, but they all mean the same thing. And this is something I'll, that I'll get into. And then the principles of hunger. So these three is what we're gonna be getting into. Calorie density. is the scientifically proven way to lose weight by eating more. So Dr. Barbara Rolls is a nutrition professor at Penn State, a leading expert in the field of weight management and calorie density. And so a lot of what I'm gonna be sharing today, I learned from Barbara Rolls and some of the research that she has done. She has three books called Volumetrics, and she goes over the principles of calorie density and then this idea of preloading or eating the lowest calorie dense foods first. What is calorie density? A measure of the calorie content of food relative to its weight or volume. And what will calorie density tell us about a food? A food that is high in calorie density is easy to overeat, making it easier to gain weight. A food low in calorie density is hard to overeat and therefore more difficult to gain weight on. This is a quote from Barbara Rolls. The more calories you pack into each bite, the more likely you are to overeat. So um, just a quick visual of what I'm talking about when I talk about calorie density. And so let's compare the calorie content of one bite of peanut butter versus strawberries. So there are 96 calories in one tablespoon of peanut butter and four calories in one strawberry. So you would need to consume 25 strawberries to get to the same calories as one tablespoon of peanut butter. And so here's a visual. One tablespoon of peanut butter has the calorie equivalent of 25 strawberries. And so if our goal is weight loss, it's gonna be a lot easier to consume a large amount of calories eating something like peanut butter and a lot of times we kind of like sneak in one bite of peanut butter and we kind of forget about it, but it can actually have a big impact on our overall consumption for the day. There are several variables that can contribute to satiety, but the biggest factor they found was that volume of food 
contributed to satiety the most. The people or the amount people eat is more reliable than the calories people eat. Rather than reducing the amount someone eats in a day, we can reduce the calories without reducing volume by applying the principles of calorie density. And so this Ziploc bag is a quart size bag and it's a good model of the human stomach. So the human stomach can fit about four cups of food, um, just like a quart size Ziploc bag. And so what they found is that um, a person tends to eat about the same amount or volume of food on average from day to day. And that may look different from person to person. So let's say one, let's say my friend eats about three thousand, or I'm sorry, three pounds of food a day on average. And then let's say I am a volume eater and I need to eat a lot more to be satisfied. So maybe I eat five to six pounds of food in a day on average from day to day. And so um, most diets and weight loss strategies tend to um, reduce how much you can eat. And um, a lot of people believe that you have to eat less in order to lose weight. But the but what Dr. Barbara Rolls found was that it was the opposite. When they applied the principles of calorie density, people actually can eat more food to lose weight. And so an experiment at um, Penn State University um, showed that if you have two sets of women, both eating a bowl of pasta about 500 calories, the first group finishes the bowl of pasta and they are done. They don't want to eat anymore. The second group eats the same 500 calories of pasta and they are no longer hungry. Um, except something was done to the second group without them knowing. A little bit of oil was added to the second group about adding about 300 calories to the meal. So adding this tiny amount of fluid did not change the size of the food, but it greatly impacted the calories that they consumed. And it did not have a big impact on satiety, so it did not cause them to eat less food, but overall they ate more calories. And so um, they had the exact same size and volume, but the one group ate 800 calories. And so liquid calories and fat may cause us to be systematically overeating without realizing it. So one strategy that we can try um, is replace oil in your cooking. And so by water sauteing, instead, of, uh, instead it can eliminate hundreds of calories per meal without reducing the volume of the food that you get to eat. And in another preloading experiment, um, so preloading is basically a first course. And they had different groups of people um, eat uh, one of these different options. So one of the times it was juice and one of the times it was salad and one of the times it was a low calorie soup. And after they got done eating, they could eat as much as they wanted at a buffet. And the only group that resulted in um, a reduction in the eating that they had afterward and a reduction in weight was the low calorie soup. So another example of calorie density, um, let's compare roasted cashews versus peaches. So there's 790 calories in a cup of roasted cashews and 38 calories in one peach. So you would need to consume 20 peaches to get to the same calories as one cup of cashews. So here's an example. One cup of roasted cashews has a calorie equivalent of 20 peaches. So if you're feeling really munchy um, or if you're going on a road trip, but you want to lose weight, then cashews is likely not a good um, choice. It's 
a food that's high in calorie density, which is going to be easier to overeat. And so even if you had a fourth cup of cashews, um, you, which is something you can, it's a small handful, you could consume rather quickly. Um, that would be compared to about five peaches, which would be take a lot longer for you to consume and five peaches would fill up uh, much more of your stomach than a fourth cup of cashews. Unfortunately, nutrition labels do not display the calorie density, um, but we can calculate the calorie density. And this is um, the MyNet Diary. I believe that's the one that I have, but there are lots of different apps that you can find to calculate calories. You want to be very um, diligent because you know, in the fine print of whatever it is that you're researching, they're based on the ingredients that it has or the cooking method, it could change the calories drastically. But what you do is you put the food into your app and then change the amount to 16 ounces or one pound. And if it's less than 600 calories a pound, then it's considered a low calorie density food. If it's greater than 600 calories, it's in that um, kind of spectrum of high calorie foods. So this is a calorie density chart and anyone can make something like this at home. You just put the common foods that you eat in your app and chart it on a chart like this. So I'll read some of the highest calorie foods, um, plain pasta, eggs, avocados, olives, breads, bagels, tortillas, dried fruits, coconut, flour, sugar, fatty meats and cheese, restaurants and fast food, crackers and chips, Reese's Snickers and cookies, chocolate and peanuts, nuts and seeds, mayonnaise, butter, oils and lard. So one of the things that we can do if we wanna lose weight is reduce the amount of high calorie foods that we are consuming and then increase or replace it with low calorie density foods. And so the lowest calorie foods in the world are whole fruits and vegetables. The exception is avocados, um, but a whole fruit and vegetable, it can also um, be processed and changed into a high calorie food. So if it's dehydrated or if it's cooked in oil, then it will actually become a high calorie food. And I think one thing that surprises a lot of people is that rice, even white rice and potatoes are actually a low calorie food. So here's a couple examples of between a low calorie food and a high calorie food. So russet potatoes have 358 calories and then mayonnaise is 3,084. Um, cooked white rice, 590 calories, bacon bits, 2,159. And then apples, um, 236 calories, pistachios, 2,540. And so nuts and seeds are one of those foods that you can just eat a small handful really quickly and you, and consume a large number of calories in a small, really small package. And it's gonna take up a really small amount of space in your stomach. And so subsequent eating afterward or that follows, um, you know, you'll still have a lot of space in your stomach and you'll, you'll still feel hungry. And so then you'll continue eating. And so overall it's, something that's not really fair, favorable to weight loss, but something that you wanna limit during weight loss. Um, just going back to that really quick, there are, so, uh, there are some people you know, who are blessed with really good genetics and they are able to eat sort of everything in moderation and stay skinny. And so what I'm presenting today is really for people who struggle with their weight and who have a tendency toward being severely overweight. And in that case, um, it's harder to moderate these foods. And so we really need to limit and sometimes eliminate altogether just during weight loss, some of these really high calorie foods. 
So crowding out, preloading, and filling up first. This is just three different ways to say the same thing. And this is really big in the volumetrics books with Dr. Barbara Rolls. So low calorie broth based soups made with ingredients that are less than 600 calories a pound with water as a base, as opposed to cream and fat. In a clinical trial, the base, the broth based low calorie soups reduced subsequent intake at the following meal and led to the greatest weight loss. And this was compared with the same exact ingredients, but not made into the broth-based soup. And so by eating the water combined with the food in increased a person's fullness, and then it reduced how much they ate afterward. Um, so adding a low calorie density first course is something anyone can change about their eating habits to make a substantial impact on weight reduction over time. And it doesn't have to be a soup. Um, they found the same thing with low calorie fruits. And so these are 250 calories or a pound, a pound or less. And so um, this is especially really great if let's say you're going to a party or a dinner party is if you eat first, or if you take a platter of fruit and you fill up on a, a first course and you fill your stomach with the lowest calorie dense foods first. And so that's gonna leave a small amount of room left over to eat the more high calorie foods. And low calorie vegetables, 250 calories a pound or less. So these three components make a um, weight loss strategy when it comes to preloading. And that is the soups, like I mentioned, the low um, calorie broth based soup, and then the fruits and vegetables that are 250 calorie per pound or less. These are the components that um, with some of the research that she did showed the greatest impact on weight reduction. Three things low calorie density foods have in common and how we can reduce the calorie density in our diet. So these are some quotes from Dr. Barbara Rolls. Less fat. Decreasing the amount of fat you eat will lower the calorie density of your diet. In general, the lower the fat, the bigger the portion you get for the same amount of calories. High fiber. You don't have to eliminate carbohydrates from your diet to lose weight. To do so would mean you would miss out on valuable nutrients. Instead, choose wisely. Go for the carbohydrate-containing foods that contain the most nutrients and the most satiety. Choose those high in water and fiber, particularly vegetables, fruits, and whole grains. Fiber is a form of carbohydrate that cannot be fully digested because it has so few calories that your body can use 1.5 to 2.5 per gram compared to other nutrients the addition of fiber helps to reduce the calorie density of foods. However, since only a small amount of fiber can be added to most foods, fiber's impact on calorie density is less than that of water. So foods that are high in water are, um, you know, whether a food is high in water tends to be one of the biggest um, qualities of a food that makes it low in calories because water has zero calories. Um, I'll go ahead and read this quote. So it says, while fat has a big impact on energy density, water has an even greater effect. Water has a calorie density of zero. It has weight, but no calories at all. Food with a high water content influences satiety because water dilutes the calories in food, adding weight and volume without adding calories. If you choose water-rich foods, you can have satisfying portions with fewer calories. Consider grapes compared to raisins. They are the same food, but removing the water drastically affects how much you can eat. So in a 100 calorie snack, you get only one fourth cup of raisins compared to two cups of grapes. And just really quickly, one of the things um, that they found was that just by simply drinking a glass of water did not have the same effect. Drinking water by itself emptied the digestive tract 
more quickly, whereas food with its eating water or eating food with water in it um, is what we're talking about here that has that impact. So some common mistakes. One common, one common, um, one mistake we often make is in selecting the processed food form of fruits and vegetables. So when we say vegetables, we mean the single ingredient whole food with its fiber and water intact. So calories are greatly increased as soon as we take a low calorie food and dehydrate it or cook it in oil. So here's a few examples. Um, kale is 159 calories, whereas kale chips is 2,430 calories for the same volume. Corn versus corn chips, 390 calories compared to 2,289 calories. Bananas and banana chips, 404 calories compared to 2,354 calories for the same volume. And then cooked oatmeal compared to oatmeal cookies, 322 calories compared to 2,168 calories. Grapes and raisins, 313 calories compared to 1,356 calories for the same volume. And russet potatoes are 358 calories. And potato is one of the foods that kind of gets the, um, you know, most criticism, I think. And, um, but most people are not eating just a plain boiled potato. Um, so French fries are 1,415 calories. And then potato chips. The reason potato chips are so much higher than french fries and regular potatoes is because they're both fried and they're sort of dehydrated as well. And so the calorie can, um, calories go up um, a lot. So it's 2,413 calories. So lastly, I'm going to demonstrate three quick recipes, uh, the wrong way and the right way to fill up first using fruits, vegetables, or broth-based soups. So what I did was I got a recipe, and you can try this at home, get any recipe, um, identify and mark the high calorie density ingredients red. Then replace all high calorie ingredients with new low calorie density ingredients in your cooking. And so you're not taking away how much you get to eat. You're not reducing the volume. We're just doing a swap. So these are the three recipes that I'll demonstrate. A fruit salad, chips and dip, and then a keto broccoli cheddar soup. The first is a side salad or a fruit salad. The recipe I found online was for a mandarin broccoli salad. And the salad, the low calorie density salad that I made was a watermelon salad. So here's the comparison. So I took my app and I took the recipe of the mandarin broccoli salad and I went ahead and put all of the different amounts into my phone. And the total calories came to 2,135 calories. So with the watermelon salad, I did not reduce the volume I just simply removed the high calorie density foods such as the raisins and pecans and the mayonnaise and the sugar. And um, the watermelon salad is 332 calories. So the watermelon salad is a good example of filling up first and preloading, something that is gonna be favorable to weight loss and help you to reduce your overall calorie intake for the day, as opposed to the mandarin broccoli salad. And so if you go to a party and someone is serving a fruit salad or a salad, unfortunately, um, sometimes it is not actually low calorie. And so it might be something that you want to limit or avoid.
cookies unless you know or ask what you know what was in it. This is the watermelon salad that I made. So next is chips and dip. So there's four different um, choices here and they all have the exact same amount of one cup of dip and 24 chips. But look at the calories and the difference between um, the choices. So, so here's the four different chips and dip. Um, so the highest calorie option was the queso cheese dip and fried tortilla chips at 1,120 calories. The next option is guacamole. It's still pretty high in calories for one cup of, cup of guacamole and a serving of 24 chips at 880 calories. So between um, that and then the third lowest calorie option is the pico and the oil-free chips that were made out of white corn tortillas. So you can save 180 calories from the chips just by switching to chips that you buy in a package at the store that is fried in oil and then making oil-free chips at home. And making oil-free chips are really easy. You can just take corn tortillas and put them on a baking pan. You don't have to put anything on the pan. Lay them out and watch it closely and cook it in the oven for between eight and 10 minutes until they're crispy enough to break into chips. And my kids really enjoy these. And so, like I said, you can save 180 calories from switching to the oil-free baked chips. And I'll go over the lowest calorie option here in a minute. So with the dip, instead of having queso cheese dip or guacamole, you save hundreds of calories by having a um, pico de gallo or a homemade salsa. So this is a salsa that we like to make. We just put the ingredients on a sheet pan and bake it in the oven, roast it for a little while, and then blend it in a blender with some um, herbs and spices and citrus. Yeah, it's really good. And some salsas at the store, you just have to be careful because sometimes they do add oil, which would make it a higher calorie food. And then I personally don't use store-bought salsas because I'm watching my sodium intake with the rice set. And the lowest calorie option was to not have chips at all, but to use these little sweet pepper scoops. And it might look weird, but at least you are able to fill your stomach full of food and um, lose weight at the same time. So the last option here, or the last example, a keto broccoli cheddar soup. So the recipe I found online is right here. So I put the ingredients into my app and it came out to 3,000 and 99 calories. And what I did was I made a potato soup instead. So I eliminated the high calorie density items and um, replaced it with just um, with white potatoes and and, but I didn't change the volume at all. So the volume stays exactly the same, but the calories are drastically reduced. So one pot of the keto soup has the calorie equivalent to three pots of the potato soup. And so that's a, a visual that really kind of shows you um, you can eat so much more if you, if you um, apply the principles of calorie density, if you eat low calorie density. And it doesn't mean that this is how you have to eat for the rest of your life, but if you're trying to lose weight, then this is a strategy that is really helpful. So lastly, the principles of hunger. Um, this Bible verse says, the full soul loatheth in honeycomb, but to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. And so um, often we 
we eat and um, it's not actually for true hunger. There are other reasons people eat, you know, whether we're bored, uh, emotional, stressed out. And so one of the things that you can try to eliminate unnecessary eating is to apply the principles of hunger. And how you can do this is run a test on yourself. Are you willing to eat a, you know, salad plate, if you will, of plain vegetables? And if the answer is no, then you're probably not hungry. And so um, you probably are familiar with this idea. So like if you offered your children a plate of plain boring vegetables. And if you've ever heard your children say, no, 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 I'm not hungry. I'm full. I'm not hungry because they don't want to eat their vegetables. But then if you call your child back into the kitchen and you say, Hey, you can have chocolate cake, or you can have an ice cream bar. Then all of a sudden they're hungry and they run into the kitchen ready to eat, you know, dessert. So this is a perfect example of the principles of hunger going back to that Bible verse is in where in this case, the child is using this word hungry. I'm not hungry. So I don't want to eat my vegetables. I am hungry. So I want to eat my dessert. They're using the word hungry, but that's not actually the case. They um, they're eating for other reasons other than hunger. And so one thing you can try to do is, and you don't have to do this before every single meal, but it goes back to the idea of preloading, which is also favorable for weight loss. If you start your meal with a low calorie um, uh, first course, and if you make that plate, if you want to test to see if you're really hungry, see if you're willing to eat, you know, steamed zucchini or something um, kind of more boring. And so and if you've ever fasted for a period of time, then you'll know what true hunger feels like. If you've gone, let's say five days without food and somebody offered you a plate of steamed zucchini with nothing on it, you would eat it. And, you know, maybe it would take 30 days of fasting, but eventually you tend to crave um, more whole natural foods without that are, you know, doctored up with flavorings when you are truly hungry. But then when you're full, you, you're not as satisfied and, you know, vegetables don't taste as good. Plain healthy foods don't really taste as good to you. You're more craving um, something more decadent. So the last thing I have here is this, I, I updated this page on, on our website. And so if you're wondering, well, what are the lowest calorie fruits and vegetables? Um, we have this page if you go to ricedietsupport.com and on the PDF page, there's the weight loss roadmap. And then if you go to sample pages, click, um, this will be available to print. But one of the things I put on the bottom is there's two things. One is the principles of hunger. And so it asks you, are you hungry enough to eat bitter greens, plain? And it has that, that verse. And so if you are, um, that's something that you might want to play with in your life to, to, to test yourself, to see, are you eating outside of hunger? And then the other little thing on this page are some asterisks. So in the bottom left-hand side, it says that if there's two asterisks, the food is the lowest calorie food, um, under 150 calories per pound, if it has two stars, and that's for the fruits and vegetables. And then if it has one star, it's under 250 calories per pound. So the reason this is helpful is let's say you, let's say you're feeling extra munchy at the end of the night, it's going to be, um, you can go to this list and you can try the foods with two stars. And so like strawberries, so have serve yourself a bowl of strawberries instead of chocolate cake, or maybe even if um, you decide for whatever reason that you are going to eat something a little more rich in calories, at least do the preloading that Dr. Barbara Rolls talks about, which is to first 
have a first course that's low in calorie density. So this page, hopefully, if you do want to try some of the things that I shared in the presentation today, um, you might find this page helpful and so you can print that out. But I, that's all. So I will go ahead and close it out. And just a reminder, this presentation was um, really dedicated to those who are not following the rice diet hundred percent, but who are in the group and they are doing one rice diet plate. And I'm really glad to have you. And I'm really glad that you're giving it a try. And then for those who want to do the diet hundred percent next week, I'm going to be introducing the boot camp and then talking more in depth about how to do the rice diet.